So a natural progression now is when the ball reaches the back. So we're gonna investigate someone's head length. You've had the intention to take it early, but you can't. You accept that that ball's gonna reach the glass. This situation, I'm not gonna put Emma under ridiculous pressure. I'm gonna start off a little bit easier and we'll naturally progress to the idea about digging the ball out. But for now, we're gonna assume that that ball's gone to the back and there's a little bit of time and a little bit of space to do it. Um, I've done a couple of videos on, on this movement to the backhand corner and, and I get fascinated just watching how the players move to the backhand corner. Um, Emma's done some work with this with me before, so I think she'll pick it up quite quick, but there might be a few little key elements that, that, that we might have to pick up on, okay? So I'm going to feed it, Emma's going to deal with the ball off the glass, and then we're going to talk and investigate how it can become better and better, okay? Great start, can't get better than that. Tough one, good. That tight one, again, if it's that tight, you can let it flex. Lovely, that's lovely. So I'm gonna talk about some of the points that Emma does well because some really good coaching points we can pick up on there. What she's doing well is the way she's moving and, and, and the shape she's going in at is allowing her to get into a two-footed base. I think that for me is one of the most essential things. When that ball's coming off the back, if you can move in a way that allows you to land, jump, hop, into a two-footed base on the backhand, you're setting up some seriously good foundations. All too often I see people go in and, and they, they, they run in direct or even run towards the glass first of all, and they get to about here and there's this lunge into the back. Don't get me wrong, that will happen, and we might actually practice a few of those. But I want you to watch these next few and watch Emma's footwork. She, she does this rugby ball shape. So she comes across here, and as the ball goes through the back, she really rolls. She's able to hop, hit, and get out, it's all really fluid. So that's all the positives. There's one thing I think she can do a little bit better, is when you're going into the back, you're, as you're rolling, I don't think you're rolling enough. There's, yeah, it's kind of a little bit, not rigid, that's the wrong word, but it's, 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 it's probably half done. Okay. So for me, I'd like to see, I'm not gonna hit this one, but the idea of, can it come from here? Can it come from a more of a rolled position? with the racket face open, so you don't necessarily need to come in with this overbearing okay. position you're in at the moment. Yeah. Almost channel Al Walili, if you think about what she does in the back, when yeah. in some videos hopefully it might show it. She comes in really well here. She gets herself around to here quite a lot. She doesn't necessarily like lift it too much. So I think it's, it's about trying to use your bottom edge and trying to use the angles of your roll to then just let it come out so it, comes, it creates a natural shape. So give that a go. You're gonna hit it a little bit softer. Keep doing the right movement patterns, but I think it's the way you roll in will be essential, okay? Roll in. Nice, that was much more open in the racket face. There it is, yes. Love that. Like it's kind of really shapey. And look, you're exaggerating the shape at the moment, which yeah. is fine. I think over time, that shape will just become a bit more natural, but it was really interesting to hear the way she hit that shot, very much with this bottom edge, very much opened up there, and she just let the angle and the levers come through, which I think was really, really essential. Good, try a few more. Open, keep it open. Nice. So what, 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 what's the feeling of difference there? What do you feel? It's, I think, similar to what we were doing with the, with the left leg and just trusting that the body will know what to do. Yeah. I'm a little bit hesitant to turn that far <laughs> sure. away right. and not kind of see the, the path that the ball will take as it's going out Okay. because you're still kind of there sure. when you make contact with it. So not being able to see where, where it goes. Exactly yeah. it goes. It's such a trust thing. It, it, yeah. It's something that, that I think once you get to grips with this and when you get really used to it, it, it's like you take away even the thought or the fear of hitting the ball straight. Yeah. You're, you're more focused on the mechanics and the movement and the flow with a bit of the grip and that openness. And actually when you trust it and you time it well, that line just takes care of itself. Um, I remember like, like when I was getting to grips with this, it was really weird. I, again, same, I, I, there's so much going on in a game of squash. You know, so much to think about, so much information to process. Actually, if there's one or two less things you have to think about, great. If you can go there and not have to think about, oh, I've got to hit this ball tight, you just, you, in a way, you trust in the mechanics and the moving parts, you know, and let that all take care of itself. I think you'll find that, that over time, the consistency of that line will get better and better. Okay, okay let's try a few more again, okay? Keep it nice and open and, and that, that that's, yeah, that slight, I can almost even call it like a slingy action, you know, because you're from here and you, and you kind of, you're coming around that ball really well with that open grip and open wrist, okay? Keep it round, good, nice. Keep it round. 
Nearly, just rush that, let it drop. Yes, good flow. Again, try not to necessarily look at it in a way. You can, I think you can trust playing it blind. I'm not, I'm not really worried about watching it hit the front wall. Yeah, ready? Get down. Good, a little bit vertical here. I know I'm giving you lots to think about, but you got back to that position. Round. Yes, love it. Nearly, just rushed it ever so slightly. Yeah. So that brings me on to my, my next point about this back corner here. When we talked about intercepting the ball before, before the, the back, talked about Emma getting as much behind the ball as possible. One thing I didn't mention, which, which I might have should have, was you want to take the ball as early as possible in that situation. The exact is true when it hits the glass. Okay. Let the ball breathe. Let it come right down. Because the more you let it come down, the more space you're going to create off the glass, the longer the ball is traveling into a positive part of the court. Yeah. If you think about that, like that way is positive. You know, ball's going to come here. It's going to be positive, positive, positive. Like the more you can let it come out, everything's going in the right direction. So I think letting the ball drop low is essential. And where I want you to do that is I want you to hold in that rotated position. So for example, I'd go here and I wanted you to hold here and then when you engage, you engage. Okay. So it's not about going kind of in, out, hit. That's a bit quick. Okay. I'll give you a quick little demo if I can. So I kind of, I'd hold and then I'm out. Okay. And I kind of, I held that position. I'm not gonna hit this one but I held there for quite a while, okay? Yeah. My racket might have been a bit vertical there, but let's see if we can get that little bit of a hold so you let the ball breathe. Look, you could muck it up and it could go wrong, but embrace it, give it a go, okay? Hold in that position, not bad, good. And again, hold there, good. That's it, you got even longer you can hold. Hold it there, good. And then the power can come back on if you want. You don't have to hit it hard. Yes, I actually like that one. Hold. Not bad. Good. Definitely saw some improvement on the hold. And it almost looked like there was just like a little breath of fresh air coming in. It was, whew, I can relax. And that's what I see. When, when that ball hits the glass, I see a lot of players panic. They get in there and they're like, I've got to get it early. I've got to get on it. If you can breathe and let it just chill for a second, it makes a huge difference. Okay, it's trust again. You know, but I feel scary to trust in that and, and to really trust to kind of go and wait there for a long time. But if you watch some of the videos of the pros doing it, they do that. They really get in that position, hold, boom, and then they come out. How did it feel to you? What, what was going on? I think when I understood the timing a bit more, it made more sense. Okay, yeah. Because at first, it seemed a bit weird to start that journey. Right. And then stop, and then go again. Okay, yeah. But actually, as I started to figure out the timing a little bit better with where the ball was gonna drop, yeah. it did make sense. Sure, nice. And like you say, the more you can wait for that ball to come back into the positive side of the mm -hmm. board, to give yourself a little bit more space. Yeah. I started worrying a lot less about the swing. Good, lovely, okay. And then with the pause, and then the jump around the swing just kind of took care of itself. Perfect, good. And all those mechanics melt together yeah. over time. Look, and look, there's a lot of little moving parts here, so it's not necessarily a thing you're gonna pick up and try once and it's gonna be there, but I think there's gonna be massive gains made about getting, getting more positive shots out that back corner, not necessarily attacking your opponent, but going, you know what, you gotta deal with something pretty good here now. Um, one thing I think I could, I could say, and it's interesting you picked up on the point about starting the journey and then pausing and then coming out, yeah. but I'm really glad you mentioned that because it's something I've alluded to in some of my movement videos, this whole power ease power ratio. So you see good players move and they do that. They, they would go initial bit of power, ease off, then power and ease off. And actually when you tap into that and get that, that movement cycle going, it becomes really, really efficient. So I think that's really positive in the way you can, you can get actually that movement going in that fashion. Okay, let's do about five or six more. Lots of patience. One thing I think I just saw, a tiny thing, was if you're gonna let the ball drop, let your body mimic that. You know, sometimes you were kind of going, and you were here, but the ball was down there maybe. So possibly you might wanna go and get down there for that split second, and then you come up, okay? So really challenge yourself to let that ball drop low. Sink, yes! you went down and you pop back up. And if you look at someone like, like an Ali Farag, Al Walili in that corner, they do that, they, they, they really drop their knees. They'll get up to here. Ali Farag pivots a little bit more, but as he gets to here, 
he's using these shock absorbers in the knees. So if we are taking that ball late off the back and letting it go low, getting your body low, so essential, okay? So it less is more. Good. That was one of your best ones there. And then look at the weight of that shot. I think I just, I just mentioned that less is more feeling. Yeah. And you look like you did that. You moved, but you kind of went, actually, I've got this. Yeah. I've got time. I've got control. So I think for me, that's a, that's a big thing to trust. When it reaches that glass, let the ball breathe. It, it's such a panic thing I see with players. They, they, the ball goes to the glass. It's like, crikey, I've got to run there and get it as early as possible. You've got to reframe it in your head. Later is better when it reaches the glass. The opposite is true once we get into this three-quarter area. Okay, so for me, I think there's some, some really good stuff in there, some, yeah. some real key little learning elements to do. So I'm just gonna reinforce this so, so it, it keeps you relatively fresh if you're trying to do this yourself. The big port of call, and, and, and the first option is can those feet become two-footed in the base? Let's see if we can get that going. In order to do that, you've gotta try and mimic what Emma was doing beautifully is this rugby ball shape. So she was coming in this way. If you do get found you're coming in that way, which will happen, yes, the lunge, you have to accept the lunge and you have to play off the lunge. Yeah. But for now, for the sake of trying to look at the, the right ways and the positive ways, the rugby ball shape allows you to get that roll. And once you're in that roll, it allows that little hop and readjustment to get that two-footed base. Once you're in that two-footed base, the execution of the line and then the movement out becomes such an efficient LinkedIn bit. And, and I think we saw that on the video, the way you were moving was lovely. Couple of things technically, yep. much more open there. So rather than going in like that, exactly, opening it up, flattening it out, yep. trusting that that turn is gonna pop back round. I think that's a key fundamental is not necessarily to go, oh, I've gotta be here, so I, I've gotta feel I can see the front wall. And if you watch the videos of the pros, there's so much trust in that fashion there. They've gone all the way around. And then for me, it was this idea about then using your knees and taking the ball late and dropping the body. As soon as I think you use your knees with a bit of a shock absorber effect, as in you landed and you went, everything just started to flow. And then even then your movement back in was connected. So I think we talked a lot about the technique and how and where to take it off the back. But actually I think a big part of this is your movement, is how you move and how efficiently you move around the court. So, Good luck having a little go at that and, and, and hopefully a lot of that resonates, whether it's positive resonation, uh, resonating positively or negatively, I think it'll be really interesting to see if you can try get that into your games.